the dragons of the storm, the mermaids of the waves, the hunch goblins and the dark trolls. The glistening malevolent selkies and the howling banshee of death. The gilly tree sprite and the elves of the woodlands and the fairies of the undergrowth. And these, these shape-shifting kelpies of the rivers and burns, at once a roaring horse and then a beautiful maiden. Luring, enticing, pulling you in. Creatures of malice, figures of fear. They'll steal away your young men. Leave them broken and impotent. And drag your children down, down to drown in the cold, turbulent waters. These are the stories told around the campfires. And at the hush of twilight, a bold and colourful tapestry of myth and belief, every thread of the weave, a step into the uncharted. A pre-Christian lyrical explanation of a raging planet's dark corners, within which wolf men and fire-breathing creatures are as real a concept as that of the one god. Generation after generation hang on to the dancing words of wise and articulate bards as they echo the sounds of the shadows. And into those shadows a light was cast. And that light was magnificent. And with tales from across the narrow waterways where young men would metamorph at times of stress into grotesque unbeatable warriors. Children were cursed into living for centuries as swans, and where entire species of poet warriors took to living underground, of bold tribal queens and of horse goddesses, and of giants who stepped lightly from one landmass to another of the creatures from beyond the mountain caves and far beyond the snow lines of our peaks. The howls in the night and the whispering in the dark. The laughter of the wee people. Whether in the underworld or the other world, a fairy queen or a brahan seer, in the deep cold fortress in the deep cold fortress of a highland winter or a bubbling summer's day in the glens a bridge was forged a bridge was forged between the worlds and on that bridge our history and our mythology merged into one